Uh, there we go. Oh, yes. yes. All right. How was the uh, How was the Dodger Cardinals game? A little bit bittersweet for me, Chris. Um, went down there, had a great time with the wife. It was kind of cool to be at Dodger Stadium. It's mm -hmm. been a while since I've been there. Um, got to saw or see my boy Jack throw, but then he kind of came out of the game, wasn't feeling great, had a little something with his side. So, mm -hmm. a good night, but then kind of ended on a on a on a bitter note there. Can we admit though that we saw the at bat of the year last night with Chris Taylor? Were you were you still there for the fourteen pitch <laughs> extravaganza? What's hilarious is I left – I was walking the parking lot as that happened. I heard the place erupt, and I went back and looked at what happened. But I, I only went to go see Jack pitch. So as soon as he came out, it was like 83 pitches. I was pissed at Schilt until I found out what happened. Got it. Um, and then I was like, yeah, let's get out of here. Yeah, for people that haven't seen the at-bat, go back and watch it on the yeah. app or wherever you can on social media. It was fantastic. 14 pitches. And, I mean, really, it was quite a battle. And then a bases clearing double. Uh, the place the erupted, Boston. bro. They erupted. I'm sure they did. I'm yeah. sure they did. I sat there. I was mesmerized by it. So yeah. it was pretty cool stuff. Um, all right. Let's get going with another game that happened out west last night. The Mets and the Diamondbacks. And we talked about it yesterday. The Diamondbacks snapped their losing streak. And what did they have to get? A healthy dose of Jake, uh, Jacob deGrom last night. Um I've asked this to guys on the rotation, whether or not they think we're seeing a Hall of Famer right now in Jacob deGrom. What do you think? Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I have a little bit different view of, like, what the Hall of Fame is or what it should be uh, and who should be in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go back and look at who's in the Hall of Fame. I have a guy up right now he's by the name of Wait Hoyt. Okay? Mm -hmm. Jacob deGrom blows this guy out of the water, and this guy's in the Hall of Fame. Okay. The only thing yeah. he has is a little bit of longevity. But, I mean, Jacob DeGrom already has more strikeouts. This guy's a 3-5-9, uh, and he's in the Hall of Fame. It's only because he pitched for 20 years. I don't believe that longevity should play that big of a part as to who is in the Hall of Fame. So, I believe what, DeGrom what, what, will pitch for longer. What year did he finish up? I don't know, in the 1930s, dude. Okay. 38 this is last year. Let's not use that as a discussion. Why? It's Why not, Chris? Be because people who are I? voting today, I think, have moved on past, like, Back then, they were like, well, who do we put in the Hall of Fame? I, who, I, I really think it's changed. That is my point. Who is voting on the Hall of Fame today, and why do they, why do they get to choose? Well, I mean, it's the baseball writers of America. I, I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> Listen, Bob Costas, <laughs> Bob Costas, whether you like him or, or you don't like his opinions, has seen more baseball than m almost everybody, right? He doesn't have a vote. It, it's a screwed-up system in terms of how they vote, but we're not – that's not the discussion. What do you, it is the discussion, though. That's my point is, like, yes, Jacob deGrom should be in the Hall of Fame. And if Wait Hoyt's in the Hall of Fame, guess who else should be in the Hall of Fame? Already. Chris Sale. Okay. That guy's dominant. What, you wanted me to go over the numbers, Chris? So you're, uh, do you think that Chris Sale's had a better career than Jacob deGrom? Uh, to this point, they're very comparable. I mean, Yeah. Chris Sale has been incredible. I don't know if you like looked at his numbers. Like his numbers are fantastic. Deal. I know. Now yeah. we're it's a little bit of recency bias for us because Chris Sale has been hurt. We haven't yep. seen a pitch in a few years. But from 2012 to 2018, All Star seven years in a row. Okay, he's led the league in strikeouts. He's led the league in ERA plus and FIP strikeouts per nine complete games. Uh, he doesn't have the Cy Youngs, but he's top five Cy Young every single one of those years. The guy is an absolute stud. Jacob Degrom is just on this trajectory. So we well, love him so much. Yeah, two Cy Youngs, three other times in the top eight. Twice he's received top ten MVP votes. That's pretty special. Chris, um, Sale's, Chris Sale's done exactly the same things besides getting the, the two Cy Youngs. Oh, I'm telling well, that, you, when that, you start looking at the numbers, besides. when you start looking at all these numbers, there's a lot of guys who have cases for it. A lot of guys. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, listen, I will, I will agree with you this, <laughs> on this point. Everybody has to change – the way they view starting pitching because the game has changed the way they view starting pitching. So if you as a voter are holding them up to the accolades of the eighties and nineties pitchers, even it's not fair and it's not right in my opinion. So Jacob deGrom, I am going to stamp him for Cooperstown right now. I know it's crazy because he doesn't even have 80 wins. I don't think. Nope. But who cares about that? That's the I'm point. With you. I, I'm with you. It's something that, that some of us have to get past. No, nope. oh, man. Look, okay. I get it. I get longevity. I get longevity matters, especially in the eyes of the Hall of Fame voters. But 
Why does it have to matter? It doesn't have the to. The game matter. changes. The game is very cyclical. Like a game goes from here to there to here to there in the way pitchers are used. You know, you just said it. So, I mean, I think that that's – it wins – and longevity shouldn't play that big of a deal. Yeah. If a guy plays four years percent. in the show, no, no Hall of Fame. But, like, you know, once you get 10 years in, what else you got to do? I will also say this, that not all Hall of Famers are created equally. There are some people who, who felt like Craig Biggio wasn't a Hall of Famer at all. And some people who thought he definitely was, right? He, he got in because of longevity, right? He was a stats collector. You never felt like he was a top five to eight player in the league. And then guys like Tony Oliva don't get in the Hall of Fame because he didn't play long enough. Okay. I, I, listen, you and I are agree. I think we're arguing the same point. I think agree? we are too. Right. Okay, so let's move on. I think DeGrom's performance last night with six shutout innings and eight strikeouts and two hits allowed was the second best performance by a Met. The fact that Kevin Pillar was activated less than two weeks after taking 94 to the face um, was incredible. And then for him to get a hit in his first at bat back. Tell the people why that is so amazing from a professional athlete standpoint. Uh, you know, it just shows the kind of person he is. And, and I semi know him. We're from the same area. That's just kind of the mentality he has. Like he's always had like, and he'll say it. I've seen him say it in interviews. He's had a chip on his shoulder. You know, I don't mm -hmm. think he got drafted out of high school, kind of went to a smaller college, didn't get drafted till late and just worked his ass off and became one of the better center fielders in the game at one point. So he has this chip on his shoulder and, you know, he's the, I don't want to say he's towards the end of his career, but you know, he's maybe he is towards the end of his career and he's fighting for every single ending at this point. And so it's cool to see him just have that mentality. And when you do get hit by a pitch, I got hit by a pitch in the ribs, broke my ribs. Um, and then I remember my first at bat back, man, it's, it's, it's scary because, you know, that's your livelihood and you, you want to be in there and say, oh, I'm a tough guy. But then you get back in the box and the last thing you remember is, damn, I, I got really hurt by mm -hmm. it. Is, and it made me have to do all this rehab and all this shit. So uh, I thought it was really cool. And, and that's just the kind of guy he is and the kind of player that he's grown into. You can see all of his teammates were like so stoked for him. And um, I, like I said, I think that just kind of goes to show uh, his mentality. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, the guys erupted on the bench. They didn't do a great job covering it on the game with mm -hmm. the camera angles and stuff, so it was a little all over the place. It looked like there were people standing in the crowd and giving him an ovation, more so than just the Mets fans who overtook that stadium. I think the Diamondbacks fans were kind of in on the story as well. I love that. I appreciated it. And I learned from the broadcast, this wasn't the first time he got hit in the face. He, really? It happened when he was with the Giants as well. He was in the game the next day. So, obviously, it didn't have the effect that this car yeah. crash did on his face from Webb a couple of weeks ago. It's an amazing story. Uh, he and I exchanged uh, messages last night. He feels good. He's happy to be back. Kudos to him, man. All yeah. right, up next, what is most likely to happen today? The Yankees score at least four runs off of our buddy Tyler Glass now of the Rose rotation. That has happened only once in the last seven games for New York. Fernando Tatis goes deep. He's homered in three of the last four games. Or Baltimore wins a game. They've lost 14 in a row. Well, Baltimore, I think, has a huge losing streak against the Twins. And Pineda, 16 in a row. Who's been their best uh, starters on the mound. So I'm going to say no on that one. Uh, the Yankees' offense is abysmal right now. And Glass Downs a stud. So I'll say no on that one. Tatis homering, though, I'll give the okay to uh, Kyle Hendricks actually leads the league in home runs allowed right now. 14 home runs allowed, and he has 2.2 .2 per nine, which is well above his mark, his career mark of 1.0. So he's given up the long ball, and Tatis mm -hmm. is in the freaking zone. So I'll take Tatis. Tatis, did, did you see what his slugging is right now? He's slugging 708. <laughs> 708. It's crazy. And he's got 16 homers. He's got twice as many homers as he has doubles. Damn. I mean, <laughs> and it's to all numbers, fields too, Chris. His numbers are off the chart right now. With all that being said, come on, birds, <laughs> Orioles, win something. I mean, come on now. Do they really want to win, though? Like, seriously, that's my question. I know the yeah, players yeah. do. I know the players well, want to win. Then that's all that matters is what the players. I, I'm a, I'm a players guy. I don't care about what the front office wants. I don't. 
that shit doesn't matter. You think the fans are sitting there saying, hey, we're in the driver's seat for the first overall pick? No, I mean, no. I'm sorry, on June The 1st, players or the fans don't want that, but, you know, the front office has to put the team in a position to win, and I, obviously they have it. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's interesting that neither of us took the Yankees there. Maybe because I'm just rooting for a good glass now performance. I want them happy. Hey, hey, they got to prove it, man. They're not like the sluggers that, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. They have been. Here's the one good thing for them. The last time they faced glass now earlier this season, glass now only went five innings. He only gave up one run, but he walked four guys. That has been a problem against New York for him in the past. So we'll see if he can correct that. All right, up next, uh, Astros took it to the Red Sox in the opener of their set. They are now just a half game back of Oakland. Now, you reminded me yesterday that the Astros were your preseason pick to make the World Series. Uh, scale of 1 to 10, what is your confidence level right now that that will come to fruition? Them winning the division, right? Of them winning the division, yes. Sorry. Let's just start with baby steps. Um, it's high. I think it's like an 8.5. And, and it would be a 10 mm -hmm. um, because I love everything. that I think their starting pitching is like super undervalued. Um, they just got Framber back, Odorizzi back, yep. the Colors like it will be back. Like I, they they have pitching and they're hitting. I I just really love this team. Um, the only thing that's making it down a notch and a half is the A's, man. Like they just why are they always good? I don't understand why they're always I don't so freaking good. Every time I look at their team on paper, I'm like, yeah, how, exactly. how are they gonna do it this year? And they freaking do it. Do so. It. That's the only thing. I think the Astros do end up winning the division, but those damn A's just find ways to be there at the end. 96 wins. Not, yep. you know, like crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because they don't have to worry about three teams at all, right? The Angels keep getting in their own way. Seattle, they're bringing up young guys and trying to develop. Um, and the Rangers are whatever the Rangers are these days. I can't quite figure them out which direction they're headed. But, so there's only one other team, and it's the Oakland A's. So, yes, it, you, you should feel great. I mean, it – it should be no lay, no lower than an eight and a half. So I think you're right on the mark there. I like right that. on the mark. I will be curious to see if they try and pull the trigger on a deal. Um, you know, maybe maybe a bullpen arm. Yeah. Something or two. That's the easiest place to fix and can have a huge impact on your team, particularly down the stretch. So 100%. if they do that, I think they're a World Series contender. They, I mean, they clearly are. They've been to the ALCS what four years in a row. Right. It's crazy. Like, they're, I like, I get it, it, man. We, we Sometimes we're pissed at this team because of what they did. Right. Uh, but let's just look at their team in a vacuum in 2021. That's a damn good team. That's, and, and once again, you are allowed to root against them as much as you want and hate, hate them for what happened in 2017 and people feel like other years as well. That's fine. But if you're a baseball fan, you have to look at their team and say, they're pretty good. And by the way, you can get snarky and say, well, they're still cheating. I, I don't know. Maybe they are. I would doubt it. I would doubt it that they're doing any sort of trash can shit. I'm guessing. But I wouldn't. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't think so. I really, really freaking hope not. But right. uh, if we're just looking at their team, 2021, they're, they're gangbusters, man. They do it. All right. Last one happened in Baltimore yesterday. Rob Ref Snyder, just a second game ever in center field, and he does a face plant on the wall full speed, chasing after a homer that ended up about 30 feet beyond the fence. If you were a teammate of his, how long does he um, have to wear that? Oh, man. Uh, kind of long. I think he's had more than two games, hasn't he? I think it was his second start in center. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm reading here he's got 115 innings. Is that totally wrong? I don't know. Anyway, like, he's not a center fielder. And I don't know if, like, the track in Baltimore is, like, shorter than other tracks because sometimes <laughs> that happens. But that's what it seemed like. Like, I don't know, man. You feel bad for the guy because that's not his normal position. I've been in the outfield when it's not my normal position. And it's scary out there, dude. Like, it takes time to learn – you know, where you're at, you know, body control around the wall and all that stuff. But it's hilarious. So to answer your question, I mean, definitely today, they at least got to be putting tape out on the wall, outlining mm -hmm. his body. They got to let him have it because you know he's laughing. He's not hurt, is he? No, he's okay. He, okay. he, he scored the go-ahead run in the 10th inning. Okay, good. Then oh. it's great. You can joke about it all you want because that shit's <laughs> hilarious. Like, this, it, oh, man. Dude, it was full speed. Some guys just kind of bump into the wall. That was like – it was almost like, hey, okay, start in the middle of the outfield and run as fast as you can into that wall. Let's go. 
but you know, it was, it's like, it's even better than that because if you do that, at least you brace for it. Like he didn't even brace. No. It. Like it was like, it was, he just, it was you, great. Do that. you can't do that if you tried, cause your body will automatically brace for impact. He just <laughs> wasn't ready for impact. That's was good. That's was good stuff. That's pretty good. All right. What do you have coming up on John boy? Anything? <laughs> oh shoot, man. We're going to go film. I'm, I'm back. We're going to film uh, our Talking Baseball episode that's coming out tomorrow. We're, I think we're doing like oh. All-Star uh, of May or something like that going on today. And oh, then a good. sequence episode coming out about what happens when you give good players extra outs, uh, uh, i.e. Tatis in Houston. Mm, good one. What about um, you? In just a couple minutes, Miguel Rojas episode, which will drop on Thursday. Nick Castellanos, who's leading the world in hitting, is that. our guest. I love that. Yeah, that's going to be good. Nicky Fresh. He's, he doesn't mind sharing opinions, so I think this one will be pretty good. Uh, quick reminder, the Trevor May episode dropped yesterday. Uh, go, go take that one in. As always, he's fascinating. He's talking about his blog. He's talking about Pilar and how he knew he was coming back by yesterday like he, he gives us a whole insight into what the team was thinking what was going on with him during that whole scary time uh, so all sorts of good stuff coming your way love that, so, love that. yep uh gotta get rolling we are back at our regularly scheduled time on wednesday 11 30 eastern 8 30 a.m pacific have a great great day and tell the boys over at uh talking baseball say hi all right see you chris see you everybody thanks for joining us